house. That when he came to Medina, he lived in the house of Abu Ayyub al Ansari. That there is enough of izzah and honor for Abu Ayyub al Ansari that until Yom Al Qiyamah, Muslims won't know anything else about him, but they know that, you know what? Prophet stayed in Abu Ayyub's house. And then the masjid, the foundations for the masjid were also laid. Masjid, which masjid? Masjid al Nabawi. Prayer in that masjid is better than a thousand prayers anywhere else except Manka. Abdullah ibn as Salam. One of the Jewish priests, etc., and he met up with the Prophet ﷺ, and then he later embraced Islam. And he said, When I looked at his face, I knew this was not the face of a liar. And then he says, Prophet ﷺ said, You know, spread the salam and feed the people and, and pray during the night when the people are asleep. SubhanAllah. One of the first advices he gave there in Medina al Munawwara. He also sent Zayd, radiallahu anhu, who was Zayd, Zayd ibn Haritha. Zayd ibn Haritha, his former slave. His fleet slave. You remember when he got married to Khadija? What's your name there, Sheikh? The back, back. Now, Ali, Jayid, so Ali, who was Zayd? When he married Khadija, then she gifted Zayd to the Prophet. Prophet took Zayd and set him free. And later on, Zayd was so beloved to the Prophet. People used to call him Zayd ibn Muhammad, Zayd the son of Muhammad. Understand that society, Amashayah, the slave is worth nothing. I mean, sometimes you have immigrants in a country, Jayid, you are a free man, and many a times the person is treated like he's worthless. Yes or no, Jayid? With Muslims, many a times you're treated by other Muslims that you are worthless. Imagine a slave, you are owned. But the Prophet ﷺ gets so close to that slave that that slave is like regarded as his son. And Allah has to send out revelation. You know what? Don't call Zayd the son of Muhammad because Muhammad doesn't have any sons. And Zayd, when his parents, when his father, etc., came, and they said, You know what? Here's your father, etc. You know, you want to go back with him? He says, No, no, I'm to remain with Muhammad. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Jayid. So Prophet sent Zayd and he sent Abu Rafi. You people go back to uh, go back to Makkah al Mukarramah and bring my wife Soda and bring my family. Bring my family to. Uh, bring my family to Medina al Munawwara because he left with Abu Bakr, so Fatima, etc. Uh, well, I'm not sure about Fatima. Had she left already? I don't know. But as for Soda, etc., uh, and maybe Aisha, you people go back and you bring. Yes, Aisha was left behind and Soda was left behind. You bring my wife, etc., to Medina al Munawwara. This all happened in Rabi al Awwal, the month which he made the Hijrah. Jayid. The Islamic uh, year begins with what month? <laughs> begins with begins with Muharram, uh, So technically, the Hijrah we say the Hijri calendar. Technically, the Hijrah was in Rabi al Awwal, Jayid. But and so Muharram suffered Rabi al Awwal, Jayid. So Muharram was before it. So why did we begin our calendar, etc., with Muharram? When he migrated, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in Rabi al Awwal, we should have started our calendar with Rabi al Awwal, isn't it? You would be. But the scholars state that because the preparations for the Hijrah started in Muharram, that's why they began the calendar with Muharram. You got that? Uh, in Rabi Athani, the next month, this, is, this was when Salah was now increased. All of these years after the Isra and the Miraj, Salah was two rakas. Fajr was two, obviously. Zohar was also two. Asr was two. Isha was also two. Now it was increased to four. This happened in the first year after the Hijrah in the month of Rabi Athani. Abdullah ibn Zubair was born and he was the first child born from the side of the Muhajireen in Medina al Munawwara. And Nuhman ibn Bashir, he was the young boy who was born in Medina and he was the first kid of the Ansar who was born after the Hijrah of the Prophet. The Adhan was also legislated in this month, in the month of Rabi al Athani, in which year? The first year, we're dealing with the first year after the Hijrah. Okay? He just migrated within a month or two. Now the Adhan is now established. Salah is now made for, and now Adhan is also established. Treaties with the Jewish tribes, etc. we made. And so we don't fight you, you don't fight you, etc. Uh, and we aid you, you aid us, etc. Also in Dhul Qaeda, then the Prophet ﷺ joined the Muhajireen and the Ansar. So he entered into Medina in Rabi al Awwal. Few months later, in the month of uh, Dhul Qaeda, he joined one Ansari and one Muhajir, that they were now brothers. That even if one of them dies, the other one will inherit his money. 
Jayin, subhanAllah. Such close ties they were put together in. So this was the first year after Hijrah. Second year after the Hijrah, Jayin. Second year after the Hijrah, from Safar to Rajab, the months of Safar and Rajab, we had expeditions after one, one after the other. Prophet um, said, Ami, this way. The sent a group of people in that way. Go after the caravan, this way, that way. So various expeditions took place. Uh, between Rajab and Shaban, you had the changing of the Qibla. Because in Makkah, Prophet ﷺ faced the Kaaba and he faced Jerusalem. So he was able to face both. You got that? But now, when he went to Medina, let's say the Kaaba is here, and he's facing Jerusalem there. In Medina, facing Jerusalem that way. So now there's no Kaaba for him to also face. And so every time say, all the Sufaha, I mean, a second Jews of the Quran, you know, Prophet wants the Qibla to be changed back to Makkah. And so eventually this is what happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the revelation that the Qibla is now changed towards Makkah al mukarrama And this was the first abrogation in Islam. The first thing which Allah, like, you know, made a ruling, a hukam, and it was abrogated. Give me another example of something abrogated in our Sharia. What's your name, Shaykh? Hassan, give me an example, something which is mansukh, abrogated. Hmm? Mut'a. Jayid. Mut'a. Temporary marriage. Jayid. Temporary marriage was allowed in the early days. Then it was abrogated, not allowed, Jayid. Uh, example. Uh, some, uh, example, the issue of alcohol. I mean, technically, we might not call that an abrogation. Abrogation is more that something was legislated. Mun'a was there. Alcohol consumption was there. And then Sharia took some time, you know, to, uh, to prohibit it. As for an example of something like an abrogation. Fasting. Fasting. Example, fasting. Uh, uh, fasting, the, what's it? The fast of Muharram. The fast of Muharram was an obligation in the early days, and then that was abrogated. So that's an example. Khair, inshallah. Also, in this uh, year, second year after the Hijrah, uh, in the month of Shaban, the order to fast the month of Ramadan came down. So now the month of Ramadan is an obligation. Which year? Second year after the Hijrah, Jayin. Also in this year, the 17th of Ramadan, what happened? Second year after the Hijrah, 17th of Ramadan, what happened? The Battle of Badr, Ya Mashaykh. Yom al Furqan, the criterion, the, day, the Battle of Badr, subhanAllah. Uh, when Muslims were victorious, Jain, uh, after the Battle of Badr, Prophet ﷺ returns to Medina, who had passed away? His daughter, Ruqayya. Uthman did not participate in the Battle of Badr. Why? Because he was looking after the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ. Ruqayya, she was sick. Imagine this. Prophet ﷺ gets this great victory at Badr. He comes back home. What news he gets? Your daughter had passed away, subhanAllah. Imagine that. Every one of his children passed away in his lifetime except Fatima. All passed away. SubhanAllah. Someone loses one kid. May Allah save us from even having a situation like that. Someone loses one kid. I mean, it's like Qiyamah, SubhanAllah. Imagine the heart of their parent. Imagine losing all your kids. And then they make fun also. They say, Inna atayna. They say, what's this? Uh, in, they say, you are abdar. You are cut off. You've got no lineage, no progeny, no, no legacy. Allah says, Inna atayna kal kawtha. Literally, we will give you kawtha, subhanAllah. So Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha passes away. Also Zakat al-Fitr, because this Ramadan was the first Ramadan was an obligation. In this Ramadan here, they fought the battle of Badr. After this month of Ramadan here, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa prayed the first Eid Salah at the Musalla, out in the open. Uh, Jayin. Also, after the battle of Badr, about a month, Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, the other daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she had come to Medina al munawwara Why? Anyone? Her husband... Her husband, what was his name? What was her husband's name? Zainab's husband's name. No. Something. I'm just passing on, you know. Her husband was captured in the Battle of Badr. And so the Prophet ﷺ told him, you know, I let you go. You know, you're free, etc. But you must allow my daughter to come to Medina and Munawwara. And so, Zayn, so then he was freed and he went back to Makkah and then he sent his wife, who was the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, to Medina and Munawwara. Later on, he became a Muslim. 
What's his name? Something else. Not Ikrimas. No, 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 no. Uh, later on, he embraced Islam, and then Zainab and him were united once again. Uh, also, about a month after the Battle of Badr, who got married? Ali radiallahu ta'ala got married to who? To Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Abu Bakr, some narrations, Ibn Usain mentions, proposed to Fatima, it was not accepted, and then Umar proposed, not accepted, and then they said to Ali, why don't you go forward? You, you propose. And he proposed, and his proposal was accepted. Alhamdulillah, join and then the following month, the month of Shawwal, Banu Qaynuqa, the Jewish tribe which was treacherous against the Muslims, which deceived the Muslims, they were forced out. Prophet ﷺ told them, because of breaking the treaty, you people can't stay here anymore. You people must be exiled and kicked out from here. The month of the Hijjah, the time of Eid, obviously, Prophet ﷺ started two sheep. One was on behalf of his Ummah and one was on behalf of his family. So we dealt with the first year after Hijrah, we dealt with the second year after Hijrah, inshallah. Short now, the year, third year after the Hijrah, in the month of Rabi' al Awwal, uh, Umm Kulthum and Uthman, they were married. You remember? Uthman's wife, Ruqayya, passed away the previous year after the Battle of Badr, during the Battle of Badr. You remember? So the following year now, in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal, he says, Uthman, here, you get married to my daughter by the name of Umm Kulthul. We have certain narrations, but they're weak, that the Prophet wasallam said, if I had a third daughter, a fourth daughter, some narrations, if I had a thousand daughters, I would marry, marry them all to you, O Uthman. That's why he's called Dhun possessor of two lights. What lights? Umm Kulthum and Ruqayya. There's no man in the history who married two daughters of any one prophet except Uthman radiallahu And how was he killed? How did he die? He was slaughtered in his house at the age of 80 something at the hands of who? People who said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. At the hands of Muslims. Majority of Muslim blood in history has been spilt not at the hands of the disbelievers, but rather at the hands of Muslims. Our disunity, our infighting, Jayid, Allah must die. Sometimes, not this masjid obviously, sometimes in a masjid, you know, to get, you know, to get, even if, you know, somebody wants to teach, you know, takti, and what's takti, you want to teach Ali, Bata, etc. to kids, sometimes you need to get, like, you know, a United Nations resolution, it's like, you know, passing it through the security council, you know, because you want to sit after salah and teach one kid how to reach takti, subhanAllah. As that's why Yusuf Islam, he says, sometimes, you know, many times he says our masajid are ruled like small kingdoms. Allah Musta. Not this masjid, obviously. All the other masjids. Jayyid. So Uthman radiallahu ta'ala and Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha, they were married in the month of Rabi al Awwal. So the point there was, you know, Muslim disunity. Allah Musta. In the month of Shaban, Prophet Sallallahu got married to Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha. In the month of Ramadan, Hassan radiallahu ta'ala was born. You remember? His mother and father got married the previous year. Ali and Fatima got married in the year after Battle of Badr. Following year in the month of Ramadan, they have a son by the name of Hassan. We have some narrations in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. When Hassan was born, they named him Harb. Harb means war. Huh? Why would they name him war? Because the Arabs, they like names like this because, you know, like a strong name, you know. You, because every person has a share of their name, yes or no? Yes, yes I mean, a guy, you know, if his name is, you know, Kareem, Kareem, you know, he's, you know, he spends money, Kareem, Ikram, and he's a Baizda, I mean, that doesn't work. That doesn't work, Jayid. So, every person has a share of name. So they named him Harb. Prophet Sallallahu said to them, no, 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 you know, his name is Hassan. So they called him Hassan. But the hadith has some weakness in it. Uh... And also, I mean, they would name names like this because if, you know, you go to battle and you have the duel, so we send someone to, out to fight, you send someone out to fight. So they say, who the Muslims are sending? Oh, they're sending Harb. Oh, the man's name is War. Ah, you know, he must be a strong man. You right? have to be a bit afraid. His name is Lion, etc. Right? War. Right? Imagine if the man's name was Daffodil. <laughs> or if the man's name was, you know, Rose. I said, no, I'll kill Rose, no problem. <laughs> right? Every person has a share of the name. So Prophet said, no, 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 his name is Hassan, Jayyid. And then for you, Mohsin, later on the following year, they had a son, and they named him Hussein. Later on, they had another son, and they named him Mohsin or Muhassin. And then that Mohsin or Muhassin, he passed away very, very young, Jayyid. Jayyid, so Hassan was born, Jayyid. Uh, 
Also, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in that Ramadan he got married to Zainab bint Khuzayma. Look, month of Ramadan, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got married to his wife by the name of Zainab bint Khuzayma. You can get married in Ramadan, no problem, inshallah. Jai, can I have Eid after iftar? Jai, the month of Shawwal, the month of Shawwal, Yamshay, the month of Shawwal. What happened? The great battle of Uhud took place, subhanAllah. In the month of Shawwal, the battle of Uhud took place, where the Meccans, etc., they came all the way to Medina. Look at them. Look at this timeline that they just wanted to finish the Muslims. Oh, we tried to kill Muhammad in his house, he escaped. Oh, let's get everybody together, let's go there and finish them off. They come there, Prophet Sallallahu meets them at Uhud, Muslims were reading, until eventually the archers came down, and then Khalid ibn Walid, who was not a Muslim, Ikrimah, the son of Abu Jahl, who was not a Muslim at the time, they, they were masters at battle, Jayil. They made an attack upon the Muslims from the rear, and the Muslims suffered greatly. Mus'ab ibn Umayr was martyred, Hamza radiallahu was martyred, and many others, 70 plus of the companions were martyred. Mus'ab resembled the Prophet a lot. That's why people said, oh, the Prophet is killed. When Mus'ab was killed, people thought the Prophet was killed. And that's why some people left the battlefield and they went back to Medina al munawwarah They said, it's all over, it's finished. They made a mistake, subhanAllah. The battle of Uhud occurred in the third year after Hijrah, in the month of Shawwal. Jayil. After this, Prophet married again. He married Zainab bint Jahsh. Jayil. Also in this year, <coughs> the verses of hijab came down. Also in this year, the verses pertaining to the prohibition of alcohol came down. What year is this? The third year after the hijrah. So that means, 13 years in Mecca, you wanted to consume alcohol, you could. It was halal, yes or no? Yes. yes. Three years in, Mecca, in Medina, it was halal, yes or no? Yes. 16 years in Islam, then the prohibition came down. And that too, it came in stages. Look at the hikmah, subhanAllah. Sometimes someone becomes a Muslim, or we have a kid, or we have somebody starts practicing. You know, we harsh on them, we tough on them. Oh, this, that, they can't do this, that, whatever. Look at this, 16 years Allah came with regards to the matter of alcohol, subhanAllah. And maybe the brother, he doesn't have a beard or something, and we saw harsh on him, no, but this and that. 16 years alcohol, subhanAllah. First Allah said, you know, there's, uh, you know, what was the first matter? That... Uh, uh, that there is some good in it, but the evil outweighs the good. Later on, Allah states that when you come for salah, don't come drunk. Other time of the day, you can drink, no problem. Salah time, don't be drunk. And then finally, do not drink at all. Aisha has said, if Allah sent the revelation first, don't consume alcohol. Stay away from this and that. People wouldn't believe. First, the iman had to become strong. Then they could accept all of this. Jayid, hikmah, wisdom in all of this. Yes, subhanAllah. Jayid. So, the Messenger of Allah at the end of the third year after the Hijrah, that's when the prohibition upon alcohol came down, finally. The fourth year after the Hijrah, in Rabi al Awal, Banu Nazir, they were kicked out. Why? Because the Battle of Uhud, Banu Nazir was like helping the Meccans. They were, yes, you come, you kill these Muslims, finish them off. So now, those Meccans are gone, and now Banu Nazir, you forced out, you can't stay here, you broke the treaty, etc., sent away. Jumad al Ula, uh, Abu Salama passes away. Who was Abu Salama? Don't tell me, the husband of Um Salama. <laughs> yes, she wa he was the husband of Um Salama, yes. But more especially, he was the foster brother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hamza and Abu Salama were breastfed from the same female. If my memory serves me correct, it was Thuwayba Jayid who breastfed them. So this was the foster brother who had passed away. Jayil. Also in Jamaat al the son of Uthman by the name of Abdullah, he had passed away. He passed away at the age of six. Take note, Ya Mashaib. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Uthman and Ruqayya, they went to Abyssinia. You with me? They settled there in Abyssinia. They were staying in Abyssinia, excellent Ethiopia. They had a son by the name of Abdullah. That's why Uthman is called Abu Abdullah. They had a son there. Then they migrated to Medina al Munawwara. Okay, excellent. During the Battle of Badr, who passed away? Ruqayya passed away. So Ruqayya is gone. Uthman is a father looking after the son alone. I mean, you know, in history we lose context of that point. That son Uthman, there, what was his age when his mother passed away? He was like about uh, two years old or three years old, Jayil. Uh, he was probably about four years old, four years old, Jayil. The Battle of uh, Badr was in the year 2 AH and now he passes away in the year. Uh, 4 AH. He was 4 years old and his mother passed away. 2 years he lived further 
and then he passed away. Many scholars say that uh, he was pecked by a bird, maybe a rooster or something, pecked him, and then the place got septic, and then he got fever, got ill, got ill, and then he passed away. On a side note, and also maybe because you know he never had a mother, you know, to look after him, to care for him, you know, the 